Hello, welcome back. Nigel with you, Nigel's modeling bench, but you knew that, didn't you? You knew that already. Um, right, so Wing Nut Wings Wednesday 13 now. And yes, we've got the little Fokker on the bench. And yes, you can see I've been playing with a bit of rigging. Now we need to get the weathering and everything done first, but I just thought I'd have a little play with this rigging. And if I really can't do it, then I can just throw it in the bin. Um, it's really difficult. This is my first attempt. Um, and for this, I'm using the lovely gas patch resin turnbuckles type C. You can see they're just plain oil at each end. They've got a, um, a 90 degree twist and they're showing you here. You just snap them off and then put your rope through them. Um, so I've done this bit of undercarriage down here because I wanted to get those turnbuckles in there. As you can see, rather than just have the easy line. So I've drilled holes through, put the easy line in and Got the turnbuckles all to it, about roughly the same length. And I think it looks a lot better than just having the lines in there. So I wanted to give that a go. And the way I did that was the same as what I'm going to show you now. Now, if you look on the wing here, we've got turnbuckles. So rather than just have easy line, what Ray's done in his book, he's used one length. And he's come from that big pylon that comes up here. And he's come down through the wing, down around the undercarriage, back up through the other wing. Back up that to the pylon, down through the inner part of the wing, down to the end of the carriage, back up the inner part, and then back up in one length. Um, but I don't want to do that. And what he did then was glued on photo etched turnbuckles afterwards, I believe. But I, can, I don't have that luxury, so I have to do mine separately. So, um, and I think it's good to jump in at the deep end because it's good to get some practice. Uh, but I think my next wing not wings kit needs to be one without rigging, um, or one that I don't care about so much and if I mess it up I mess it up I mean like the DH2 or something like that which is absolutely plastered in rigging well perhaps I should do that copper state um, cauldron I've got because that's easily replaceable and it's only about is it 30 or 40 pounds rather than the 150 200 pounds of wingnut wings so here we've got the turnbuckles and here you can see what I've got as a piece of wire and this is just this is just me playing around and I've been sat here all day and achieved not much at all really just playing around and uh, it's very very hot and very very sweaty and horrible so i can't really do any spray and i want to get on with the gannet but that one needs painting and it's too hot for that but we can see here we've got a piece of wire on there which is just twisted so what i'm doing is literally pick up the turnbuckle thread the wire this is 0.15 tinned copper wire and I normally i would do this with a magnifier there we go we got it okay so we're going to bend that over just get a pair of closing, I can't remember the name of them now, closing tweezers, just twist the, I tried this with stainless steel wire and it just breaks the turnbuckle, so you have been warned. So I'm just going to twist that like that, old pair of Tamiya cutters, cut that off of there like that, and there we go. There's our wire with our tail, and if you want to go a bit tighter, do is come along and grip it some more and twist it some more to make a slightly smaller loop and what we're doing here is making the anchor point now the reason I'm doing this um, is because I don't know the angle I would have liked to have used these turnbuckles here you can see these this is the turnbuckle that has the loop in with the pole and what you do is you glue the you, you drill the hole at an angle through the wing so basically you would come along here and drill a hole at an angle put the turnbuckle in and then rig it I don't know what angle they're going to be on and the worst thing is is when you've got the turnbuckle you know, it all needs to pull uniform you don't want it like that and they won't bend they'll just snap off so I'm doing this like this and as you can see these are all I can move these around and they will just when I put the the um, well in fact I could probably do it now if I could see what I'm doing if I could pick up the bloody line it would be helpful <laughs> got no nails got no hair fat ugly Dear, 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 a lot going for me on, eh? So that's got a thread through there. Blimey. Can't believe I managed that without a magnifier. Okay, so we're going to pick this up. I'm going to give this wing another flat coat because my fingers are all sweaty and horrible. So I'm going to give it another flat coat once we've got the turnbuckles in. But basically we'll pull that like that, you see. And whatever angle we go on, you can see that the turnbuckle will follow suit. So we'll get a nice straight line. And then after it's so long, we can run with a silver pen and 
colour it all in silver, I believe. I think that's what you do in it. So um so there we go. So there's three. I just need to do another one and then glue them in. So do another one. Cut that end off of there. Might be fine. So we'll do another one, get that through there. In fact, I've got a little bit of a nubbin on there, I can see. From where I've broken it off. Get that through there, bend it over, give it a twist, grab these. I hope you enjoyed last week's Wing Nut Wings Wednesday. Today is actually Tuesday of last week, so I'm over a week ahead now. I should be working on the gannet, but as I say, I can't. So we just twist that until we've got it tight enough. Then we'll cut that off like that. We'll put that. 0.15 tinned copper wire over to one side and then what we can do we've got holes drilled in these wings so what I can do is put this through I'm doing the top first because what I'm doing is putting the glue in from behind so obviously I'm plugging up the hole and then what I'm going to do is plug up a drill hole next to it for the underside because the underside is not obviously as important so we're going to do the top first so I'm going to put this wire through here as you can see and then I'm able to grab the back of it what I want to do is twist the wire so that the loop is that way if I can. Um, where's my little tweezers gone? There we are. So I want the loop. said to be that way round. Okay. So I can just hold that from this side and I've got two lots of super glue. I've got like a thicker one which is the VMS 4PE and I'm putting that on first so that that capillary into the hole. Okay. Make sure that turnbuckle is not affected by the glue. Okay, why? Well, I'm glad I'm doing this on this because it's all a massive learning curve for me and maybe for some of you too. If Steve's watching, I know you're watching, Steve, it is for you as well, mate. Uh, what I did first of all, I started going in with the thin, and what I was doing was pillory in straight up, and it was actually gluing the turnbuckle to the wing. And of course, with this 3D printed resin, as soon as it sees CA, it's like shit to a blanket. and. Uh, that's it. Now just to make sure we got a nice solid joint, I'm going to put some of the thin in. Because the... And then I've got a cotton bud just to rock out the excess. Because the thin will go in and take up any voids. And then we can cut that off. Just like so. And we have a turnbuckle. As you can see, it's all loose and dangly. And I want to do this before it's weathered because if I have to do touch up with paint and then I can weather over it. Um, they all look uniform, whereas if I do, a lot of people do weather their models first and then do the rigging. Well, if then you have to go in and touch up, you also have to touch up your weathering, which is not going to be easy, is it? So um, I've got another three there to do, and then I will come back and um, see what on earth I'm going to do next. And we're back. So as you can see, <clears throat> both wings are done. Turnbuckles on both sides. Bit of tape. This is the blue tape moss that you sent me if you're watching this. Um, Bit of tape just to hold them down and stop them getting snapped off. So I've also on the tail plane, I don't know if you can see there, I fitted some turnbuckles and they are the little 148th turnbuckles from Art Scale Kit. Um, and they're, they're obviously smaller than 30 second scale. I've got the metal ones from Gas Patch, but I wanted to try the Art Scale Kit ones, see how they work out. So, um, and they what I've done because they they kind of, these, the resin ones from Gas Patch, they feel a lot more brittle, so therefore they're harder. And these, the ASK ones, feel a lot more like normal styrene, softer if you know what I mean. So I thought I wanted, I want to see their longevity. So I've got one here on my little bin, um, and I've got a turnbuckle there, stretched between two pieces of Easy Line, and I've got it actually quite taut. 
more torque than you would normally have on a model. Uh, I'm going to see how long before it breaks because I'm wondering if the Easy Line is basically going to, sort of like a like a, a wire cutting cheese. I wonder if it's going to basically end up going through it. We shall see. Um, but if it's still there like that in in two or three days, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fine. Always be careful with the Easy Line. You see people using it. You can see I've got the Easy Line on here for the um, for the tail parts. And always be careful not to overstretch it. I did this on a on a BF109 I built. I used it on the antenna, put it into the mast here, pulled it, stuck it down, great. Come back a year later and the mast is out down, it's snapped the mast off. It's that strong. So also apparently Easy Line will break down as well. So Gary has told me, who uh, wrote that beautiful book that, um, that I showed you last week. So um, so yeah, I've glued this fairing on here. We've got the, the fairing glued on the front there with the machine guns. That was a real swine. I had to tape it down and then when I took the tape off, it took some of the bloody paint off as well with all that hard work with the painting. So I might see if I can tart that up a bit. If not, I'll just leave it. I, I don't know. I might put an oil stain down there or something or bird droppings. Um, but I'm, I'm honestly getting quite fed up with this thing, to be honest. I've snapped that off. I've pulled tape off. I've pulled paper off the side here. I think the reason I'm so frustrated is because it's, to me, there's a lot of new stuff in here that I've never done before. I've never used turnbuckles before. I've used Easy Line for antenna, but I've never done rigging before. And, um, you know, I sort of look at that Felix Stowe book and sort of look at that and think, you know, I could do that. <laughs> I couldn't. There's no way I could do that. I'd throw it across the room. So, um, yeah, but these wings, they're not glued in. They're just pushed in. So I can still get them out, as you can see here. Pull that one out of there. And then we'll pull, whoops. We'll pull this one out of here. It's a lovely tight fit in there. Come on, come out. Urgh. I do think we need to glue those wings on, to be honest. Um, I haven't glued this down yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to because it's going to cover up all that beautiful detail in there. We've got the gun, the bullet runs you can see. We've got the the bin for the um, for the waste cartridges. We've got the belts and everything. It's, it's lovely. But, uh, we shall see. I've also attached this um, piece of Easy Line down here because that's going to attach into the the rocker in the lower undercarriage that actually just if you notice this aircraft has no ailerons what they did was twist the wings they twisted the wings in either direction to to, to steer the aircraft so um we're talking early times here so anyway um and you can see there i've added turnbuckles on the underside as well what i did was actually where these arms are Let's see if i can get this off i managed to snap this when i was working on it I had to put a piece of brass wire in it. Um, I've never seen a model so flimsy. What I actually did here was cut. What I should do is get myself set up so that I can show you what I'm doing. Steve has actually been on to me about doing this and setting it up so I can focus in on the close-up work. Sure, I've got disgusting fingernails, which are sometimes dirty, and I think it will be quite disgusting. And it's also very, very difficult to do, and it's going to mean a lot, a lot of editing. So I think I'm gonna, if I'm going to get into that, I'm going to do it on some simple stuff first, rather than stuff that I'm struggling with, you know, um, that I can't bloody sell. So I need to go and get some new glasses before I even dream about doing it. But uh, I, will, I will get it done. So uh, you will see, Steve, it will get done. But these, as I said, these are sort of, these aren't scale kit. They're more flexible than the gas patch ones. Um, as you can see there, I can flex them slightly. So I can sort of pull them straight, which is a good thing. But as I say, I've cut the I cut this I cut slots in there and then glued them in so that we've got turnbuckles rather than just the easy line. What a lot of people do is just use easy line, but I wanted I wanted to get some turnbuckles on it. I wanted to see how it looks. So um, next thing we need to do is look at some weathering. So I'm going to be using some oil streaking. I'm going to use some uh, air, aerosol, the airbrush. Apparently, they get a heavy buildup of oil in this area down here, and they got quite blotchy. Now, saying that. I'm looking at a picture here. If we go to version B, we've got this side-on picture here, and you can see it's got something up here. I'm guessing that might be oil staining, and it's a bit dark down here, but the rest of it is pretty. You can see there it's pretty clean. Um, so I think maybe some people go a bit over the top with the weathering. I don't know. But um I, I, I can't see any that are like really, really black. So I'm not going to go mad on it. I'm assuming they would wipe the aluminium down, but the fabric would have been stained with the oil. 
So what I'm going to have to do here is grab a bit of masking tape. Um, I'm going to be very careful here what I use because because I don't want to rip any more of that bloody beautiful aluminium turn aluminium finish off. So I'm going to detack the masking tape. We'll just get that on there like that. Just move it over a touch. And then what we'll do is we'll just add some staining in this area with the airbrush. And then the rest of it we can do with oils and streaks and washes and filters and all sorts. I'm just going to add I'm just going to add some dirtiness in this area. I think the side I think I'll leave this for the oils and let, use the oils to dirty up the aluminium but the actual fabric. So what I've got is some LP65 which is rubber black XF85. What I'm going to do, do a little test spray first. I've got this mixed about 80% thinner to 20% paint. So I'm just going to add some staining in this area, just darken this area up and keep it very random as well. And I think that that's enough. Maybe a bit more. And then maybe a few dark patches up here. And then we'll do the same on this side. blotches that should be a good basis for what we're going to do next I bet somewhere it tends to accumulate in the corners so so I'm not really too bothered about accuracy this is just a case of getting this one done because this will be my first wing not wings completed um, my first wing that wings build ever and uh, and um, <clears throat> it's just a case of getting it done it's, it's you know learning my limitations and I've learned that I'm not a very good modeler at all to be honest not so harsh from the green to the black. There we go. If we gently pull this tape off. There you go, you can see there the effect. So that's all I wanted to do is just get that frontal area blackened up a bit. Um, and that's that. I mean I, I guess this wood would have got stained. Add some very careful we don't get a sudden out of the airbrush. There we go. As I say, we've got blacks and browns, oils, and everything, we can really go to town. So, there we are. Right. So, I'm going to get the airbrush cleaned out. And then I'll be back. Okay, so initially um, I'm going to concentrate on the fuselage. I'm going to leave the wings separate. I don't want to assemble the model just yet because it is so flimsy it's untrue. Um, I probably could put the wings on but I'd rather just concentrate on this fuselage and I think it's going to be a lot easier for you to see what I'm doing. Because what I'm going to do is put, first of all I'm going to put a filter on it uh, which will just bring everything together and just tone it down. Then I'm going to do some streaking using um, Migamo streaking and oil brusher, they're, they're both pretty much the same thing, I think. Um, you just like to give them different names so they can sell more. Um, and then, what I've got here, my little aluminium palette. I've got some odourless thinners here. And I have a, this is my oils, I never mix tools, never mix pipettes and brushes with your, um, with, with a, you know, your acrylics and your enamels because they don't go well together. So this is Migamo Panoline Wash Green Brown. Um, what other colours have I got? This is the German aircraft set. 
So we've got black wash, green brown and a blue grey. So I think really, well, I've got another one here which is an RAF set. Oops, top drawer, not at the bottom. Uh, this one's got storm grey, neutral brown. Actually that might be better, neutral brown. You can see how prepared I am for this cat. You can see I've, I've practiced this video about seven times today already. <laughs> not. So give it a very good sheet, make sure the pigment's off the bottom. Turn it over and you should be able to see clear through the bottom. So we're just going to get some of this. And um, there's a dirty pipette. I don't have a dirty pipette, so what I'm going to do... It's going to be very difficult to pour, isn't it? Oh no, it's not too bad. No, it's bloody crap. <laughs> Right, back in a minute. Okay, so don't try and pour anything out of these bottles. It's a joke. Um, see what I mean about dirty fingernails? It's one of my nails now. It's, it's still coming out of there now. Christ. Why is it every Mig Ammo product I get? Well, it's my own fault for pouring it out, but... Why don't we just make bottles we can bloody pour out of? None of them do. None of the paint jars or anything. Right, so I'm going to have to go and wash my hands out. There is, I'm going to get oily finger marks all over this thing, which I don't want to do. Okay, so ignore all this mess over here. We'll use that in a minute. What I've done here, I've put some of the brown in the odourless thinners. And what I'm going to do is just touch the brush to remove the excess. And then I'm just literally going to brush this on here. Okay, and this is going to act as a filter. Now, I really need a bigger brush than this. This is no good at all. Um... Here we go. There we go, that's better. Use a nice big brush and just brush it on. And keep the, your brush in the direction of flow. Be very careful because it's so easy to break. I'm just going to let that sit. And as you can see, it kind of bleeds out and it just gives it a dirty sort of stained look. It's called a filter. You can buy filters. You don't need to buy them. You can make your own. You can use enamel paints and everything. You, I'm using these Panoline washes because I've got them. I would just use enamel paints if I had to. Or oil paints. Just use oil paints. You, know, you could use the Abtalungs. You can just go and buy yourself a cheap set of oil paints. There we go. Be very careful doing this with certain models. When you flood it with thinners, that breaks the plastic. Um, Bandoi being one. And also be, don't do it with your tracks on your tanks. If, you've, if they're single link and you've glued them all together, they will fall apart. If you're going to do that, thin your oils with um, lighter fluid. That works much better. I learned that one. I can't remember his name now. You can see here, you can just work with this, let it dry. And you can see we've got this sort of, and it's almost giving you like the, the striped linen effect. A bit of dust in there. And then afterwards we can just give it a gentle rub with a tissue and remove the excess. And we'll do the same here on the fuselage. And we can put it everywhere. You know, we don't have to worry about not getting it on places. Just put it everywhere, over the decals of the lot. It's just going to give it as I say, it's going to give it a, a kind of dirty look or a, a stained look, as it were. So I think what we'll do is do the front first. It's not really that important doing this aluminium because it's it's all going to get washed and messed with anyway. And there you go, you're kind of getting a streaking effect and a filter effect all in one. Sorry about the noise guys, got some noisy people walking by. There we go.
So that's that, I'll do the same top and bottom and then I'll uh, wait for it to dry and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, so as an initial sort of addition, I've, I've done the wings and everything, you can see we've got that <clears throat> filter on the wings, I went over them. It looks like I've managed to spray some thinners on there where I was cleaning my brushes, so never mind. That's the beauty of oils and all this stuff with uh, thinners and that, and like acrylics, you can just go back and play with it. Um, so yeah, so we've got the we've got the filters all on the bottom and the top of here. But you can see on here, we've got this kind of blotchiness. Now, you can, if you remember, I put the black paint on, and it's got that sort of edge like that. Well, I've now I've made it look a bit more like oil staining that's sort of soaking in and stuff. The way I've done that, I've got this Modeler's World Oil Wash, but it's just it's, it's just basically a black brown oil wash. So you can mix a bit of black oil paint, a bit of brown oil paint, mix some um, thinners in it, get it nice and thin like it is here, yeah, and then just do the same. You don't have to buy these all these products with all these fancy names. So I I use these because they're given to me when I, when I was um, working with working with Premium Hobbies, he gave me this to promote for him, and he sold out. So. That's why they give you stuff. They give you stuff. You you see me use it. You go and buy it. They make profit. That's why they do it. And um, that's that. So I've got a brush here, which is, is sort of a bit stiff. So I can just sort of stip all this stuff on here. It's a bit too much, actually, to take some off the brush. I'm just going to just randomly put blotches. Just put blotches. Sorry, cough in there. But, but randomly put blotches on like that. Yep. All down there. Okay, remember this is over an acrylic. This is um, LP23 matte varnish. So it's it's hard as nails and it'll, it'll also absorb. And then what I'm doing is rolling the cotton bud over it. And if you get like an area like here where you can see the edge of where you've done, just give it a wipe. But we can use this and remove it in different, like remove more from here. And the more you remove, go back to the clean end of the cotton bud can see you kind of get this grading of the effect which is what I want I want the I want it to be dirtier at the bottom obviously Let's go back to this one now I'm showing you stuff here that I'm doing and this is I, I tend to do most of my weathering with cotton buds because you can wipe with it you can streak you can roll them around and get this blotchy sort of look I'm just going to wipe it off of there There you can see that sort of darkened, stained kind of look. Okay, so we've got the, clearly we've got black patches in there. And then this is starting to dry back here, so we'll give it a rub. And then just roll over it. Same on the decor. Just remove it and roll it around. I think the rolling it around is what gives you that sort of... Because remember, if this was a metal aircraft, this would be sort of streaking, running, whatever. This is fabric, so it, and it's apparently a lot of it comes on the inside. It sort of soaks in from the inside. Apparently these engines, they, they had a total loss oil system anyway, I think. But they, um, they leak like hell. <laughs> so... There we go, so now you can see we've got a, a blotchy, dirty looking fuselage. I think I might put some more on the front there, really go to time with it. <clears throat> Just roll that around a bit. There we go. You can see if I don't rub it, it doesn't come off, it just moves it around, get it off the metal. All the pictures I've seen, the metal metalwork always looks clean, which is why I think this is coming from the inside. There we go. You can see there, proper blotchy, proper dirty. And uh, give that a gentle rub if it doesn't look, if it looks a bit too blotchy for you. Rub it with your finger, and if you don't like it, you just get some of your odorless thinners, which I get this from uh, Amazon. Get it on a paper towel, give it a rub, it will come off. Or on a cotton bud, it'll all just come off and you can start again. 
The only bit you won't be able to get off is that LP65 because that's acrylic. And there we go. So you can see now we've dirtied down our decals instead of having that bright white. Okay. I can also do some of this on the fin at the base. Because that would have had dirt thrown up at it from the um, from the tail skid, but also the oil coming from underneath the aircraft. You can see we just grade it out. You can see what's possible. The oils are just fantastic to work with. So much better than everything else. In my opinion, some of you will disagree. I just find, you know, oils and a cotton bud just do everything I need. There we go. Tarnished, stained. I've also put those um, turnbuckles on there as well for the the actuators. That's why I've got it on a clothes peg so it doesn't get damaged. Right, so I think the next thing I need to do now is get all this blotched up a bit and then um, we'll look at some streaking I think. So that's all done now. We've got some sort of blotchy pattern on the top there which you can't really see much of. We've got the blotchy around the sides and then on, underneath I've done that tape as well and oil would have capillary along the tape on the uh, stitching. So there we go. We've got a nice dirty aircraft now. So um, but I didn't want to go over the top with it because as I say those pictures they they don't look that bad so I have this MIG ammo oil brusher here and this is a, a dust color so this is actually what I'm going to use for streaking okay so what I'm going to do is put something like this Okay, just put some like that. And what we're trying to show here, this is um, it's just it's just it's just random. Oops, that's a too heavy, way too heavy. That's probably going to take off all that wash underneath. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just I don't like these brushes at all. I don't actually like these. I don't know why they have to do this. Why don't they just sell it in a in a bottle? It seems that it's MIG ammo and AK are the same. They just always after another gimmick. It's, it's just crazy. Look at it. It's all this bloody paint on the stem. It's, it's horrible. So you can just put some on here. And I'm just going to let that dry for about 10 minutes. Don't try and do it too quick. You just take it all off. But we'll be back in a second. And we'll get, what we're going to do, we're going to get some odorless thinners. And we're just going to brush around and just soften it. And make it so that it's hardly there, but it's just some streaking. As I say, you can see in this picture here, we've got some streaking going on. Or it's like from where it's been painted or whatever. I don't know. But I just want to give it sort of that effect. Right got some odorless thinners here in an upturned Tamiya pot. So I've got a brush here which is knackered. I don't want to use good brushes for this. Just going to soak off the excess and then I'm going to come along where I put these streaks and I'm literally just going to brush and then move off the brush and go up and down and as you can see we are getting a very very subtle streaking effect. See just in that area there? This trouble is with the camera is just picking up on the shine because it's still wet. Basically all I'm doing is I'm trying to remove basically all of it. Just leave a tiny little bit behind and you can see you just get that very subtle streaking. In fact once again guys as usually happens, the camera is making it look <clears throat> a lot more a 
got more sort of in your face than it really is. Okay, but hopefully you can see that there. It's a very, very subtle effect. It's just like it's had rain running down it or something. And then I'll just show you how it looks on the on the German cross. I'm actually making it quite wet now. Just take some of the excess off the brush. And this is what I'm saying, you don't have to have a product designed for streaking. I know when you get the streaking pens the brush is narrower. I think that is the only difference. And you can see you can leave it like that if you want to. So you can get that sort of, um, that fear, you know, fear, um, striped canvas, stripped canvas, brushed canvas, whatever you call it, I don't know. You've got that there. You can see we've got a, a weathered, washed out, stripped, striped, brushed finish. And if you notice in that image, that's why I don't think it is actually watermarks on that image I just showed you. They're actually perpendicular to the fuselage. If they were watermarks, they'd be like that, wouldn't they? So I'm going to carry on doing this. And then I'll come back and I think we'll get the wings on. So I'll see you in a sec. So there we go. You can see on there the streaking. Now a lot of you will be thinking, but you did all that blotchiness. Yep. This will attack that and it will all work in together. You can see the blotchiness in behind there, but it's all blended in together. And I think that's what sort of really works with oils because it all just blends in. Um, and, you know, and I've sort of feathered it up to here as well. So I haven't done the streaking over here because the wings are there. So you'd have streaking down to the wings perhaps, but then the pilot would be rubbing all that off when he gets in and out. If you want to soften it, just get a cotton bud soften it just don't go along it like that because you'll ruin the effect there we are so I think what we're going to do now is look at fitting the undercarriage I've got the wheels put together and I want to put the wheels on the axles first otherwise when you sit the undercarriage down it sits here rather than on the wheels so you can see we've got the tires that lovely Old World War One light grey colour. Those leather patches, you've got these leather patches on here that cover the, the valves on the inside. I think they go on the inside. Before we put any glue on, I will check. They're a nice snug fit on there. I'm not going to bother using those, those discs in the middle because I wanted to assemble the wheels and clamp them with pegs. But uh, see we've got a nice bit of camber on there as well. I'm just going to quickly check the instructions and make sure those tyres those patches go on the inside. Yes, they do. Yes, I can see it there in that rigging diagram. So what I'm going to do now is grab my extra thin. I'm going to pull that wheel off a touch and make sure we don't damage the axle. Just put a drop of extra thin on there. And then as I turn the wheel, push it on and that'll be enough just to hold that on. Remember guys, these models are extremely fragile, so you don't need to be trying to make things strong. That's way too much glue. I hope it doesn't kill that decal. Idiot. Do you know, if there's a mistake to be made on this model, I bloody made it. Every single thing I have messed up. I broke that bit there off there last night. Stupidly, I drilled through these to put these wires in, not thinking it's going to weaken them, isn't it, because you're putting a hole through. So... So this front piece is going to go in here. Where's my tweezers? I'm going to use the back of my tweezers to push that in. You see, this is this is the thing with wingnut wings. Everything is painted and everything's a really snug fit. Even though I've taken the paint off of the, the fuselage, the actual um, undercarriage is still painted. So now I'm going to put a tiny drop I'm going to keep it off of the silver. I hope it'll just be enough. Just 
just to sort of tack it in. As I say, we're not going to be handling this too much. Make sure these are out of the way. And then that leg can come over there. Oh, we'll put this leg in first. Okay, so they can go down in like that. You can see that one will just push together. And then a drop of cement. Obviously this is all going to have to be weathered again. I'm going to put the, the footsteps in as well for the pilot to stand on. And then we'll get those painted. I expect to put this model in a display cabinet or something and come back in six months time and it'll be a pile of bits because it'll just fall apart. Because the rigging will just pull it to pieces because I've bloody broken everything. But it's certainly, um, I want to do more Winkner wings, I know that, for sure. It's a proper, proper challenge. As I say, it's a bit heartbreaking when you read comments from professional guys and they say, it's such a simple little easy build. <laughs> it's the hardest cut I've ever made. So there we go, so that's our undercarriage on. So now we can look at connecting these into these, you've got these little horns down in here, where are we? There, they've got to go into there, so we'll put them in, wrap them once, have a super glue job done. That'll be done off camera because I'm going to have to use magnifiers. But there we go. What I think what we'll do now is pop these wings on, that's the wrong side now, duh. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is just put a drop of cement in here in the bottom and a drop in there and then put this wing on because the next thing we're going to do I mean these wings don't really need glue in I don't think but the next thing we're going to do is rig the bottom so you remember there's that little pylon that goes on the top and if I fit that and then turn it over to do the rigging <laughs> guess what's going to happen you got it it's going to break so they've gone in lovely we've got no dihedral or anything so that's nice so uh, we're going to let those dry and then what we can do is use the box, put all my bits in, to support the model when we're rigging it. <clears throat> Just like that, we'll get that plastic part of it, that's our engine in there. We can use the box to rig it, and as I say, I'm, I'm going to have to do that off camera because I've got to do some more um, streaking and stuff on the wings, I think. There we go with that it can now stand on its wheels I'm not fitting the tail skid the tail skid is over here and as you can see it is extremely flimsy and here's that pylon that's going on the top it's got a couple of bits of rigging on there that's gonna sit in behind the guns in there just like that you can see that it's just asking to be broken off so I've also, on the back of here, what we nut wings do, they give you a couple of recesses. You've got turnbuckles here, moulded on, and you've got a groove in there to put your cable in and glue. So what I've done, I've cut the end off, and with my little loops I make, like I showed you to do for the wings, what I've done is glued them into those slots. Yeah? And then we've got wire loops to go around rather than gluing it in like that. Also, we've got this pulley going over. This is the pulley where the cables get pulled for doing the um, warping the wings instead of ailerons. I've drilled a hole in there to get a cable through. So that's going to be uh, quite difficult. But there we go. So I don't know how much more I'm going to film of the rigging because, as I say, I, don't, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I kind of don't get the point in you watching me mess things up. 
because you may make the same mistakes. Well, then, if you do see me do it, there's going to be a million different ways. And I know I'm going to get a million different comments from people that will say, you should do this, you should do that, you should do something else, you should use this, you should use that. And everybody has their own way of doing things. And um, modelling is one of those million ways to skin a cat job. So there we go. Right, I'm going to um, do whatever I do next and I'll see you when I'm ready to come out. So still on the weathering thing, I'm going to do some dot filtering now. You can see I've done the underside. You can see we've got a sort of lighter tone. I keep saying you can see, I don't need to stop that. Um, so over here we've got the, this one is done. And you, there is a difference. I'm trying to say, I'm trying not to say you can see. Uh, there is a difference obviously between the two. Okay, it's sort of, it's sort of dust, sun, bleach. And what I'm doing is just taking these oil, you can use ordinary oil paints, you don't have to use these silly things. Um, all I'm doing is just putting a few dots randomly on the wing, do the decals as well. Put some of those there like that. <coughs> And then we'll get some of the white. Put some white on here. Just like so. If you want to see this, if you go back to my um, years and years ago, I did a, a, a Takum uh, Mark One tank, Mark Four tank, World War One tank. I really went to town with this. I used blues and reds and yellows and everything. And you can see the effect on there. I just said it again, didn't I? It is really worth doing. Right, so we do that. We cover that in dots. You can use yellows and whatever you want to use. I, I basically want to sort of just dust this down. I want to give it a kind of dusty, dirty look. That's what I'm after. Um, so there we go. Right. So I'm going to let that dry for well, about five minutes. Don't want to let it dry too long. Just to let it dry. For, it's very warm today though, so I might even go just for about three minutes. And then we'll get some of our odorless thinners. A drop of this into an upturned Tamiya jar. Just like so. And then, like I say, we'll leave that for a couple of minutes. And then I'll show you what we're going to do with it. Okay, it's been about three minutes. So we'll get the brush nice and wet and then just dab off the excess and then go in with the direction of flow just gonna run this brush you can go back to front you don't have to go front to back it's just don't go sideways and stuff because obviously the airflow over the wing would make all the dust and stuff <coughs> go into a you know a pattern across the wing rather than side to side unless of course you want to make it look like it's been sat for ages and it's got swirly patterns on it or even little piles of dust you can see there initially you get this you get this very sort of messy look and then we clean the brush off and then wet it again. I'll take a bit off of there, it's a bit too wet. And then just brush it all out, like so. As you can see, we've got brush marks which indicate the direction of flow. Don't like those we can soften those in a minute as i say it's very warm today so everything is drying very fast um today is actually the first of august 2024 um i should really be working on the gannet but it's all paintwork i need to do and it's just too warm um for those of you that don't know when the weather's really warm when you're airbrushing um you're really better off not doing it or Leave it till sort of late at night when it's cooler because what happens is the paint comes out the airbrush and it dries in the air 
and you end up with very, very rough, dusty finishes. And the trouble is, once you've got that, there's not much you can do about it rather than sand it down. And if you're spraying detail parts, you don't want to be sanding detail parts down. What you can do, what often works, if you have got a dusty finish, is go over with a neat coat of levelling thinner. Just spray that on. And it will sometimes take it down, but it's also very easy to make it run, especially off of like raised detail. So uh, there we go. So if you're not happy with the, you can see on here, especially on the decal area, you can see we've got this brushed look. You can go over the cotton bud and just soften, soften that. Be careful of our turnbuckles. I would have liked to have done this before the turnbuckles, but the trouble is when you handle it, you leave more finger marks in it. And of course, I mean, I'm handling it now, but I'd be handling it a lot more when doing the turnbuckles. So there we go. You can just, as you can see, turn that into a... So it looks like it's dirty, being used, whatever. You can even play with effects of, you know, go in between the ribs. So basically what you can see here is a, is a, is a build-up of the... Remember we did the masking last week on the wings and we painted the lighter green. And then we did the, um, the filter over the top, which didn't really work out very well. I don't think that, uh, that MIG ammo made a very good filter at all. Probably better off doing my own. Um, and now with this over the top, you can see it all kind of coming together. And remember, I'm only doing the wings because it's this sort of um, loose taut, <laughs> loose taut. It's like a textured fabric rather than the fuselage just being a, a flat. I mean, the fuselage just had its own treatment, as you know, with the on the sides there. You can see that's dried out. And you see the effect on there. So. Uh, yeah, you're trying to, you got to remember it's, it's very old and we're trying to make it look very old. Um, there we go. So I'll do the tail plane as well once it's on. Um, I would do it now, but the trouble is, is holding it and, uh, and then handling it to fit it. So, because I don't really want to be sealing it in. The last part of the um, job is going to be, after it's all done with the rigging on and everything, I think, I'm just going to give it a very light dust coat and we'll perhaps put some mud and stuff on the tyres. But for now, I think we are ready to start rigging. I've, I've done those two control lines down there. I think I showed you those earlier, didn't I? Troublesome. Um, this takes so long, I forget what I've told you. I've also got to fit those little footsteps pieces in there. We'll have to brush paint those in. So um, we'll get that done as well at the same time when it's upside down. Right, back in a sec. Okay, so... <clears throat> I've done the lower end of the aircraft, the bottom, and we can see the turnbuckles there and the cabling. It's worth noting on this, this rear ones, these are the ones that distort the wings. You've got these um, quadrants that the cables go through, so I drilled those through. Um, and the front, you've got the, um, the inner goes behind this front frontal spar here. And the outer goes in front of it. I did actually drill, but I couldn't get the cable through. There was blockage, and of course, because I put the wheels on, I couldn't get the drill through. So I've had to wrap it around. But we'll touch that in. Um, we can also see we've got greasy finger marks and stuff and bits of super glue. But I'll give it another flat coat, I think. Um, once the rigging's all done after, after all the handling's done, and that will hide everything. And then I'm going to give it a dust with some um, with some dark earth or something. But you can see, as, as I said earlier, um, you can see why I've done this, because I can put it down like this. I can work on it and not worry about breaking anything on top. And that is one of the beauties of doing it this way, rather than putting them through, like the Ray Rimmel way, where you would um, you'd start here, go down, go down, go up, go up, go down, down, up, up, like in one piece. That's, that's a fantastic way of doing it, but if you want turnbuckles like this and you want them to actually move like these do, then, um, then there we go. I've got a little bit of a tail hanging out there, I can see. I'll we'll have to go around and check all this afterwards. But um, it's very difficult to get in and cut those. I saw in the 
in the Felix Stowe book, Gary does it with a knife. But I can't see how the knife can possibly cut it. But, uh, I might just put some super glue on it and just squash it down. We shall see. It's my first one. I don't expect it to be perfect. But I expect it to be as good as I can get it. So there we go. Um, but I must say, as I say, this is my first Wignet Wings model. I'm looking at all that rigging. It does, it's, 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 uh, it's all got to be painted silver and everything. You've got to paint the cable steel and paint the turnbuckles. I think the turnbuckles are brass. We'll do all that afterwards. But uh, yeah, it's far from finished yet. There's a lot, a lot of work to do. Um, obviously, the engine is built. We've got to put the front cowling on. We've got rigging to go through there. That's going to come out to these turnbuckles. So there's lots and lots to do yet, but uh, we will get there. Um, I think what I'll do next is fit the tailplane um, so that I can do these lower these lower cables on the tailplane. Um, so I'm off camera, aren't I? And that way we don't have to worry about uh, turning it over to do them at a later date. So we've got the tailplane over here. So that is literally going to... See, I've got a fan on, that doesn't help all the... All the um, cables are blowing around everywhere. So that is going to go into there like that. Push it in bit by bit. Check I haven't got any cables trapped. Nope. They're all sort of twisted up on themselves, these cables. It's weird. So finger on the front of the model and just push just push this in bit by bit wow I don't know if you can hear it it's absolutely pouring down we've got thunder and lightning as well at the moment which makes a nice change from all the bloody heat we've had it's still horrible but what we're going to do is put a spot of cement on there, there we go, and that should help us push it in a bit more, Ugh, go on, there we go, so that's that, so now we're ready, so what I'll do is I'll do this on camera so you can see how I do it, I know it's far away but I don't want to zoom in because all the focal length goes to pot, so what we do is we take our easy line, make sure it's not tangled up with anything else. I'm going to try and do this without glasses. I'm going to thread that through that turnbuckle there. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up the other side and just give it a gentle tug. Remember, you don't want to be, make sure that cable's out of the way. We don't want to be, um, you know, stretching it to the inch of its life. We just want to, all we want is a little bit of tension just to, just to make it straight and then just a tiny bit more. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to pass it under there. Okay. And then give it a little pull. As you can see, it forms a little sort of loop on the end, and then we can just put a bit of super glue in there. Let that dry. When you look at the real thing, you'll see the cables are kind of twisted at the ends, and it's, it's giving it that sort of authentic look. When it's painted, it doesn't really show, to be honest. So now what I'm going to do is pull this. And I find these cutters are the best for cutting the cables because you can get them flush. And that's it. You can see once again I've got a little tail left on there so I'm just going to nip that. I have to be really careful not to snap these tail planes because they're just literally held on with a, it's like a 0.8 plastic rod. I don't know how I'm going to get in there to cut that without breaking something. I 
maybe I should be using some new ones. Maybe some scissors. No, very difficult. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll think of something. Maybe put a drop of glue on it, and then um, and then just push it up. Maybe a little tiny drop of glue on there, and then just give it a squeeze. Will that do it? No. <laughs> there. Well, might have to just stay there. So I'll get the other side done, and then I'll do the top, and then I'll come back um, when I'm ready to come back. <laughs> 